Hey Moon Magic Super Souls, welcome to your readings today. So this is a request, this reading, and many people in fact have contacted me about relationship readings and I know some people are not so keen on them but I've had a lot of requests for relationship readings and one of the, uh, com in the comments um, you suggested, and thank you so so much, um, I am aware of who you are, thank you so so much because it was sort of seconded by quite a few people asking for a kind of like a monthly relationship reading so that we can look at what's coming in the next month relationship wise and although many many of you will be connecting with this for love for intimacy you know the person in your heart um, uppermost in your mind will be somebody who you are either in a relationship or it could be a crush some of you may want to look at these the, the month ahead in terms of working relationships or plutonic relationships if I start to move into the territory, I guess that, and I'm drawing cards um, that are talking about the the love between you or, or what people are feeling from that perspective, you, you'll need to, I guess, disregard some of those messages if you're looking at a plutonic relationship or just kind of uh, tune in and think about the kind of the essence of the energy. But I'll try and kind of um, navigate that. And I'm going to be doing something, you know, interesting with these readings in the way that I've done before, where we are going to draw a card for both parties. So one card will be for you and the other card will be for your, your person, whoever this may be. I'm going to draw a card, first of all, to guide you in. And this will be the kind of energy that's sitting between you. So this will be the first card and we have some crystal hearts as well. Uh, I'm going to draw three just now. And then actually, in fact, I'm hearing cutting cards really loud and clear. So actually that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So seventh house partners, <laughs> that's going to be for pile one. Okay. But I'll just do this now. Seventh house partners. Perhaps they're telling me to get on with it. Um, air element communicating. That's for pile two. <laughs> Anyway, I will tell you how I'm going to navigate this in just a moment for those of you who kind of want to just get the heads up as to how this is going to, going to work. And then lastly, yeah, we have fifth house creativity. Okay. So those are the three cards for the three readings. And we have four pile one. We actually have, um, now this is a Jasper heart. I hold that up to you. Okay, so that's for pile one. Pile two, we have a turquoise halite heart. And then for pile three, now I have to say that we have a beautiful purple crystal heart here. I actually don't know what this is. I've had it for a long time but I don't actually know what the crystal is. If anybody does know, please put it in the comments. It's really great the way you guys kind of chip in and voice things if, if I'm not sure. Really, really, really appreciate your comments. So yeah, this is a beautiful purple crystal, but I'm not sure what it is. Okay, let's sit that here. So that's for pile three. Now, what I was going to say was in the readings, what I am actually going to do is draw a card for each, for both parties. And we'll kind of let a conversation unfold as well, really between you to see what the energy is between you, what's happening, what each party is kind of, where you're going with this. It's worked very well in the past in readings that I've done before. And I know many of you really, really enjoyed that. So we'll do that particularly with a view of looking at you know what's happening between you what's happening in relationships for the month ahead so we'll perhaps just give this a go see how it goes if you guys enjoy it then let me know because you know if we've got the thumbs up then i will do this ongoing just a monthly check-in relationships across the board and then whoever you are focused on or thinking about you know if you bring them in your mind focus on them sit with sit with the energy your thoughts your feelings about this person um you know then you can kind of see how things are going to pan out over the next month 
So beautiful souls, I'm going to leave the camera running just for a few moments as I always do with my readings, just to give you a little bit longer to get focused and to see which of these piles is speaking to you. If there is more than one speaking to you, then go with it. Um, it may just mean that there is more than one message. And also when I draw the first two cards to sort of check out the energy of both parties, hopefully that will kind of help you as well to really make sure that, that the reading you've chosen is the right one for you. The one that's really resonating with you for the person you have in your mind or on your heart at this moment. So beautiful souls, let's, um, I will leave the video running and I will see you in a moment in the readings. Um, I hope you are all doing amazingly. Hello Pile One, welcome to your reading today. So we're looking at the relationships as it were for the month ahead, but particularly a relationship that you have with someone who is uppermost in your heart, very much on your mind. And we have, interestingly enough, seventh house partners. So pretty powerful card for Pile One and the beautiful Jasper Heart. Now I'm going to first off straight away just draw two cards and we're gonna look at the energy of both people. So if for some reason this isn't resonating with you, then you'll kind of perhaps know that this is either not your reading or maybe it could be about a different person. It could be somebody still very much in your aura or in your zone, even if you were trying to focus on one particular person. So I'm seeing this for person one. We have the mirror. Now this is very interesting, okay? You may find in that case, I will just say as well, that sometimes if both kind of people, sort of like both messages are sort of resonating with both you and the other person, it quite often means that something is being mirrored between you. I'm seeing this as well for the second person. We have the thread. Okay. Okay, so what I am seeing in this connection here is two things are coming through with the thread card first of all let's just tune into that energy first let's move that over here for a minute firstly hanging on by a thread that's coming through here now whether that is you um, or it's the other person i feel like someone is hanging on by a thread you know, it's like they're kind of fighting to stay in charge or not exactly in charge, but to, to maintain the status quo in some kind of situation. I think they want to kind of break through. But I, th I think things, there's something a little bit tenuous here for one of these people. That could be you, that could be them. The mirror. Hmm. I think the mirror knows that there's actually a very powerful resonance between you, but I suspect the mirror has moved beyond maybe some sort of difficulties that the other person, that you've moved through and beyond. Now this could be you, it could be the other person, but I think the mirror has experienced a lot of challenges in life and actually has really looked themselves face to face in the mirror, literally. And they kind of know that you can come out the other side so I don't think for the mirror it is an issue for there to be a struggle in relationship actually or, or for the other person to be struggling. I think they simply see it as something that can be processed and sorted because I think they've done that. But I think the mirror is way ahead of the thread. I think the thread is still kind of living in a bit of a, a blackout really. They want to break through. And they feel a bit like they're hanging on by a thread sometimes. And this could just be within their own world rather than even in relationship to the mirror. I almost feel as though they're a little bit closed off to the mirror, actually. The mirrors like can see that this person maybe has some sort of history or some stuff, some shit happening kind of thing. But it's not, I don't think for the mirror this is an issue. But I do think for the thread it is. I think they themselves within themselves 
don't feel fully available really as yet. They want to be, interestingly enough, and this is curious, and I think the mirror probably picks this up. I think the thread wants to be fully available, but kind of isn't for some reason. It's going to move these along in a slightly more central way so that we can actually draw some more sort of cards and maybe actually some runes on either side here as well. Okay. In fact, yeah, let's do that first. We have some runes for, let's have some runes for the mirror first one coming out for you. This is the rune of wholeness. Okay, so I, yeah, I think the mirror has experienced already quite a lot of personal struggle in life, if I'm honest. I think this person has looked themselves in the mirror face to face, which is why I think when they look at the thread, they see the potential, they see the rainbow bridge of healing, they see that it's almost, you know, love can conquer all, um, you know, with the right support, you know, the thread will be fine. But I don't know if the thread sees that as yet. And one room coming through again for you. Fertility. Ah, okay. So the thread does actually see the potential of this connection or the potential of, but I actually think this is the, this is the dilemma. I feel there's a dilemma here for the thread. The thread sees the potential in no uncertain terms. They see the potential fertility, the abundance, but they don't feel as if they are sorted enough to be able to have this full committed partnership with the mirror. The mirror thinks, well, what's your problem? You know, we can work through things together, you know, and the thread is like, yeah, but I'm, I'm still in darkness. I haven't sorted things out enough. I think the thread still puts themselves under a lot of pressure to probably be perfect almost as if they don't feel they will be acceptable unless they've processed everything. And they're quite um, singular in a way. I think they have learned to deal with everything on their own. So the idea of letting someone in in a vulnerable way is quite a challenge, really. That's what I'm seeing. So we're going to be asking about the month ahead. And bearing that in mind, we've got kind of two focuses. One is the essence, which we're looking at already, between these two people. And then we're looking ahead and we'll get some kind of lots of messages through for you, I hope. So let's have a little look at the month ahead. I'm going to use the Akashic Tarot, see what we're shown here. How will the month ahead pan out between the mirror and the thread? What might emerge? What might happen? So we have the Five of Scrolls diversity in reverse. We've got the On Track. We have Hilarion in reverse. All right. As you know, if you follow my readings, I don't generally read tarot cards in reverse. I do read the Akashic, <coughs> the Akashic tarot in reverse. They just have very distinct kind of meanings in the reverse position. Will the wisdom and the mind. Mm. What I'm seeing here, beautiful souls, is that Any kind of delays are actually providential, okay? You know, Hilarion is, is a card of learning. Will, the wisdom and the mind, it's a card of, of, of above all, self-control. You know, if you know, we think of empowerment as empowerment over ourselves. It's not power over others. I think the thread is having to, actually is having to sort of work out something, like take charge of themselves. I feel like the mirror, interestingly enough, might actually get a little bit tired and start to feel like um, they want to look elsewhere while the thread, because I think this is feeling a little bit like, you know, you're waiting, the thread is, or the mirror is waiting for the thread to get this breakthrough moment. But I think the thread is still processing something, actually. You know, sometimes, the rune of fertility, Ingers, it actually does say it requires completion of beginnings. So something that started has to be sort of wrapped up. There may even be something between you. Let's get some clarifying cards. There may even be something that came between you. Yeah, here he is with a suitcase. There may be something that came between you that caused you to 
um, to slow right down or, or to temporarily separate or have a have time out from one another um, if you work with this person if this is a working arrangement um, you know maybe contracts fell through or there's work to be done so the focus is much more on there's like a focus elsewhere but I feel like this is actually providential because we have the on track card I think a delay is needed, interestingly enough, though I do feel that the mirror is perhaps kind of if this is a love interest and maybe you met them at work, um, if you are the mirror, I think the mirror is probably sitting there thinking, well, if you're just not going to get it together, you know, actually, you know, I might just kind of, I might just move on. I could get back on track and go elsewhere, you know, live and learn, move on, re-empower myself. But at the same time, I just feel like, like there's a really big connection here. Okay, let's, let's look at the connection between you for a moment. What is the connection here? Here we have the connection between the mirror and the thread, please. Take a leap of faith. Only when you're willing to step out of your comfort zone will you reap great rewards. Okay, hmm. a new chapter begins, whether it's with a new partner or in a current relationship. Okay, which is exactly what I was saying. Right, that's interesting. So I, I will say for some of you, maybe if you are the mirror, maybe you genuinely are feeling like, you know, it's it's kind of time to move on, actually. You've waited for long enough, you know, and actually you're kind of ready to set off on a new journey. You know, may, maybe there has been enough of a wait. You're not wanting to hang around anymore. We are looking at the month ahead. Let's see how this pans out. Because at the moment, yeah, it may be providential. For some of you, it may even be providential that this didn't really evolve or emerge because you know, maybe this person, the thread just isn't ready. And if you are the thread and this hasn't emerged, um, maybe you just genuinely aren't ready for this right now and you kind of know it. There's a greater amount of learning, perhaps learning here to, to know and to understand and, and actually not feel like you've got to constantly strive to be good enough or to get it right for somebody else. Okay. Let's... Let's draw some more cards. How is this panning out through the month? Jaguar energy. Mm, okay. The lower world. We then have the rainbow. Aha. Okay. And then we have... the holy mountain, and we also have the card of magic. Okay. I actually think, I'm just looking at all these planets. We have the sun, the moon, we have the sun, the moon, we have the sun and the moon here. We, we've got, what well, looks like the sun and the moon again. We've got three lots, three cards, all of them have the sun and the moon in them. Now, irrespective of gender, if we're non-gender specific, I think what we're seeing here is is something moving forwards here. Sort of we're seeing a real breakthrough. It is literally this breakthrough here to the rainbow coming out of the darkness, out of the lower worlds, out of the shadows, into a place of light. And quite fast moving. I mean, this looks like this parrot. It's moving forwards almost like a jet engine. This is very interesting. If you are the mirror, and you are beginning to get a little fed up of waiting and maybe you feel like you know you perhaps a new chapter needs to come with someone else or if if this is a platonic relationship or a working relationship and you're waiting for someone to contact you or come through with a contract you know things have been really slow and you're just thinking do you know what really just going to look elsewhere i think something will come through in this month I think something, I think we will get, see this sort of breakthrough moment, actually. 
let's ask what the outcome is how does this emerge what happens let's um let's get some more cards maybe we have a little bit of information about how this actually emerges okay we have the high priestess we have the seven of cups oh wow <laughs> okay lots of cards flying out so you've got um high priestess seven of cups you have the five of cups six of pentacles and the ace of pentacles okay i think this is actually genuinely going to move on what's really interesting is i think it moves on at the point when it's almost to say when the mirror reaches this point where they're like, do you know what, whatever, <laughs> I've just, I've had enough, I'm not waiting any longer, you know, I'm, I'm moving on, I'm going to look elsewhere. I think that's when we see the thread coming through with an olive branch here. Just when, you know, the, the mirror has got fed up with feeling like you're just on hold, waiting, disappointed. Um, we see a shift, a new beginning, an offer of something here. I'm going back to the same thing. For some reason, there's divine timing around this. There's something that's being processed. The, the, I think the weight is um, providential. I think it's appropriate, actually. So, so I think you will see a shift with this person, the person uppermost in your mind this particular connection, this relationship, whether it is love or otherwise, I do think you will see it shift and move forwards and quite fast when it happens. You know, it's gonna kind of emerge, it's gonna happen like, like magic, as if by magic, but you might find that there's a little bit of waiting first. That's what I'm seeing. It's not immediate. You're having to sort of trust that this is being guided. Assuming, beautiful souls, if you are the mirror, that this is actually something you genuinely want. If it is something you want, and yeah, it could be a platonic relationship, a friendship, whatever it is, but if it is something you want, I think it will and you can enter a new chapter. I think the thread will find the breakthrough moment, but actually the thread has to do it for themselves. This is one of those scenarios where nobody else can do it for them. This is why the will, wisdom, and the mind is in reverse. They've got to do it for themselves. No one else can do it for them. They've got to kind of reach that turning point on their own. They've got to do their own learning, their own stepping up. No one else can do this for them. They've, you know, they've just got to do it. It's how it is. They wouldn't be the right person for you if they didn't step up and do this. Okay. So let's get some messages actually. Now, if you are the mirror, let's get some messages from the thread. Okay. The thread says, I remember the day we met like it was yesterday. Yes. Can you hear me whisper your name? I miss you. They're thinking about you really all of the time, even though they're in that kind of dark place where they feel like it can't happen or they're not good enough or it won't move forwards. You are absolutely uppermost. Absolutely uppermost in their mind. Let's get some more messages. Let's hear from the thread. What else would the thread want to say to the mirror? You are always safe with me. I saw myself in you, the mirror, the moment I, the first second I laid eyes on you. I actually think this is slightly in reverse actually, because it's a mirroring going on here. I think the thread actually does feel safe with the mirror. And I think it's exactly this. It's one of those unconscious dynamics where there is a mirroring going on, where the, the mirror has actually come through stuff and out the other side and something of the thread knows this. Okay, let's have a look, see what else we have. What else does the thread want to say to the mirror? Give in, give in for my touch, for my taste, for my lust. This person really, really, really wants to make that happen, but they, it's 
really interesting because I do feel that they are in a place where they're doing battle. Maybe they just don't feel that you would want them. Maybe if this is a, a situation where a relationship broke down. And maybe, you know, if you are, if you are the thread and you feel it broke down and you may just feel that this person, um, perhaps this person, I feel that the mirror probably may have taken time away perhaps, but whatever broke it down, I think that the thread is absolutely wanting to move it forwards. Yeah, I have sleepless nights caught between confusion and pain. You are my everything. I think this person is just and this is if this is you really really torn and also not confident about the, the mirror being ready and available to hear to connect I, i'm just hearing there's a lack of confidence on the part of the, of the thread about this and about themselves or even about whether the mirror will want them and be there for them let's draw some more cards to see what the, the mirror is saying to the thread i want you Okay, pretty straightforward. I dream about a future with you. Okay, so the the mirror is actually really very certain. I I have felt that from right from the start of this reading that the mirror is is kind of very certain. However, something hasn't been feeling quite right. I need you to help me. Hmm. Okay, let's get some clarification around that. Our connection is so beautiful, but it's also painful and confusing as hell. Your name is following me everywhere. You are my secret passion. Okay, so what I'm seeing here, it really is um, just the fact that I just feel that the energy around it, the dynamics of the thread are such that it really has been very hard for both sides here because the thread is struggling doesn't really know maybe quite how to express themselves how to move this forwards perhaps backs off goes undercover and you know that gives really mixed messages to the mirror the connection between you is really really strong so if this is for a plutonic relationship i think it's a very genuine friendship um, you know whatever it is in love i just think it is really really powerful but there's something interesting if there is something that is mirrored even though i think the mirror has moved on and worked through certain things perhaps more than the thread is more confident in themselves i think deep down the mirror also has quite a lot of insecurities too Let's ask and see what the mirror is also saying. I can never say it, but I do love you. I have no words for your kindness and generosity. Okay, so the mirror really, I think the mirror isn't letting on how they really also feel. If you are the mirror, I think you're not showing. Yeah, my love for you goes so deep. This is, this. there's a lot of issues here between the thread and the mirror around a lack of things being spoken openly and kind of deep-seated stuff that presses buttons, triggers difficult or, you know, intense feelings, not so much difficult, and kind of sends you both, I think, skyrocketing into other areas, other places. Okay, let's ask. Now, we, we, I'm seeing a breakthrough. I'm seeing something shift and move as the month moves ahead. That we have asked for. Let's get just a few more cards to see you know, what can sit between you. What, what might emerge between you for this moon month? I say moon month. I'm so used to saying moon month because I do my all zodiac signs around the moon month. For, okay, around this month. So we have a big no and a big wait. Coming back to this again, there's divine timing around something here. Wrongful advice. Yeah, what is this about? We'll have to draw some more clarifying cards. But there's definitely a pause. Wrongful advice, you are right. Hmm, okay. I actually do think that... Maybe uh, wrongful advice here. Wait, I, I, I do. Maybe somebody has said something or given someone some information that was not entirely correct. And sort of both parties are living with the consequences of this, actually. 
but I am seeing weight. I, everything in your reading is saying, look, a weight is providential, but we are seeing something that shifts forwards at some point during the coming month. Not necessarily the moon month, although it could be, but the coming month. Okay. I'll just draw a few more tarot cards to see where this, where this is heading, actually. Oh, look at this, the Emperor. I'm, I'm, this seems to be so positive, the Emperor and the Lovers. You know, I, th I think this is going to come together, truly, um, beautiful souls. I really see this coming together, whatever, it, whatever the nature of the relationship. But in love, I see it coming together. I think at the moment, somehow both of you are a little bit bound in some form of insecurity, some form of perception that is possibly not absolutely really that clear. Buttons have been pressed perhaps on both sides, even though I feel like the mirror is a more confident party than the thread. The thread's not actually revealing a lot either. You probably just see a nice shiny front. You both, you, you both actually have something of that in you. I think both of you have learned to defend yourselves, but we're seeing a coming together here. I think both of you have real deep-seated feelings for each other. Uh, I think the chemistry, the love is very real. With the on track card, I think you could really build something. Something is needing to be processed and perhaps because wrong, wrongful advice has been given um, and therefore there's been some sort of actions based on assumption or based on information that isn't entirely correct. And I think it has to work its way through, okay? That's what I'm seeing. It has to work its way through and be processed. But, you know, all of those um, little shamanic medicine cards with the sun and the moon on them, irrespective of gender, you know, we're talking about a connection here that's profound. Pile one, I think this is actually your reading for this month. I am seeing it move forwards, but probably not immediately, but you might just have to let it sort of unfold and be processed or for you to process things, for the other party, whichever party is you. But I hope this is helpful to you. Um, and if it is, let me know. And if this is a reading you'd like me to do every month, just to check in. And I love relationship readings where we get this kind of conversation going. We look at the dynamics. So, um, you know, do let me know in the comments. And if it is, then I will, you know, think to, you know, perhaps do this reading every month. Um, and, and hopefully that will be helpful for you beautiful souls thank you thank you for liking for sharing for subscribing now before i finish actually i just want to give a big 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 um massive heartfelt thank you so um some of the cards i've been using here today um i don't know if any of you have followed white rose guidance um, I think her name is actually Lindsay. I know her as White Rose Guidance. Um, I know she is actually taking time out, but you know, I have personally always thought she is a seriously the go-to relationship reader on tarot. For whatever reason, she's taking time out. If any of you have benefited from her channel, do please send her, you know, your send her light and you know whatever she needs during her time out. Um, she is an amazing reader. And also, you know, you can purchase her cards and her readings as, as mine are, the majority of them are, of course, timeless. So, you know, you can still check in on her site, even if she's not uploading new readings, you can still check in on her relationship readings. Um, even though she is taking time out, the, the channel will still be there. So there is a wealth of readings there. So just wanted to bring that in. Her cards are beautiful. Um, we're also using the Hermit Tarot cards today as well. Lovely little pack here. So, um, but yeah, do do particularly um, just hold light. I always think whenever I kind of hear of a, a really good reader taking time out, for whatever reason, those are her personal reasons, I'm always thoughtful as to what that means and how important it is that, you know, anyone who's benefited from her readings and her channel is still really holding light for her beautiful souls i am sending you all the love in the world i i think this is 
something that can actually happen. And yeah, give me feedback so that I know if these are, this is a reading you'd like me to touch base on every month. And beautiful souls, if you're new to my channel, I do readings, I upload readings every single Sunday for immediate guidance, weekly guidance. We look at the next seven days to get much more detail. And twice a week, I always upload, usually on a Tuesday and a Friday, I, I upload other readings where we're just asking specific questions like this, or there may be a planetary alignment that I'm tuning in with. So whatever is happening, there are usually a ton of readings and I post a lot of shorts in between. So do um, check in with the channel and yeah, let me know and, and let me know how your month pans out as well, beautiful souls. It's always amazing to hear from you. Thank you so, so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you for another reading really soon. Tons of love, Pile One. Hey Pile 2, welcome to your reading. I hope you're all doing brilliantly. So we're looking at your relationships uh, for the month ahead or potentially a particular relationship for you and how it might pan out. Um, turquoise howlite, beautiful energy and air element communicating. Kind of says quite a lot in itself. I'm very struck by, you know, turquoise howlite. Um, howlite isn't actually naturally a colour. Um, when you buy turquoise howlite, it's actually bean coloured. You can see there's almost like a little place where the colouring didn't take. Well, that's what I have read anyway. Uh, so I feel like there's something that's needing to be said more clearly here. You know, it can't, it can't kind of just be painted over is what I'm hearing here. There's a lot of energy here, even though it's an air element, it just feels like it's, it, there's a lot of emotionality, there's a lot of water energy between you. So first thing we are going to do is draw two cards to see the energy of the two people involved here. Let's just check in and see how this is. Let's have a look, see what we are shown. May we have a card for person one in this connection. You have the orphan. <coughs> Okay, so this is for one of our people in this connection. That could be you, it could be the other person. Interesting, two cards and I'm not sure which, so actually it's this one. The flame, mm, okay, right. What do we have here? Hmm. Do you know the strongest message coming through straight off the bat for you is that there is a connection between you that goes way, 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 way back. Way, way, way back. I mean, if this is not a love interest, it, it could also be like a child, the arrival of a child in your world. But if it's the arrival of a child, it's like an old soul that's returning that you've known before. This is a very powerful connection, a really powerful connection. I, I'm just going to dive straight in and draw some more cards and then we'll draw a rune or runes as well. Let's use the Akashic Tarot. So we have Ark of the Covenant. This came out in reverse. We have Add Some. We have the Lookout. And we have Up in the Air. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. This is completely reinforcing for me what I feel I'm already seeing, that this is an absolutely destined, fated connection. Uh, I really do feel that this could be someone who you have wanted to connect with for a long, long time it, it, at a level of soul. This is someone where the communication between you is so strong you know, it's one of those telepathic, when, when you have a, what I call a blue, you know, when you've got a Bluetooth connection with someone and you, you know, you think it and they're picking up on it. Even, and I'm going to say, even if I, I know we're asking about relationships for the month ahead and, you know, particularly someone who's on your mind or that you're connected with already. But, you know, um, this for some of you could even be someone who you haven't yet met, but you're about to. I just feel like it's 
it's guy I feel it's guided and I feel that both of you have waited for this for a long time you you've waited to come together for a long long time lots of things haven't been right been things have been up in the air you've had to wait but it's really, really guided. And I, I just do feel you've known one another before in past lives. It's really, really clear to me. Whoever this is, look at the flame. Like an old flame, like a twin flame. Yeah, you're coming back together. Now the Ark of the Covenant is interesting because it's come out in reverse. I don't generally read cards in reverse. I always feel I get the information I need. But I do read the Akashic Tarot in reverse. That's what these are. And this is a card that says you're on track. So I think you're coming back together with purpose or you are together with purpose. There is something you need to do together. There's work to be done. There's history between you, even if it's history in a past life, there is history between you, there's, there's work to be done, there's some sort of resolution, something can be um, settled, sort of almost. Let's draw a rune, or runes, uh, see what comes through. So, um, so let me just tune in with the energy of the orphan and the flame first, just to make sure, my apologies, I've dived straight into the reading, but I was so struck by this past life energy, this strength of the connection. Let me say a little bit, let's tune into the energy of the orphan and tune into the energy of the flame, just to make sure that you're confident that you're in the right reading and that you know who you are. Or And I was saying in pile one, sometimes if you're not sure, you feel like a bit of both could be you or a bit of both could be the other person. It may just be that... Um, there is some sort of mirroring going on. But yes, I feel that the orphan is, I think this is someone who has actually experienced some losses, probably in this life as well as previous ones. But I think if, you, if we're talking previous lives, I think you're fully aware of the losses that you experienced. I think you have a real purity of heart you're one of those miracle people, if this is you or this other person is you, then this person is the other person. This is someone who can, who manages somehow to hold that purity of perspective, even in darkness. You're very transformative or they are very transformative. They have the capacity. This could be somebody who works in a helping profession and I suspect can be very, very, very good. It could be very, a very, very good communicator, actually. Now, the flame, the flame is someone who has a lot of burning passion and desire within them. They're not always sure how to express themselves. Part of the attraction Part of the connection is, for the flame at any rate, is that the orphan is such a good communicator. I think the flame feels very good around the orphan. I think the flame feels understood, feels reached, feels connected to. Because the flame actually recognizes, it's almost like the orphan can sort of voice things for both of you somehow. So it's just saying a little bit, I'll tune some more into these cards. I've got two runes for the orphan. We have Isa, this is the rune of ice standstill, and then we have the rune of signals, Anzus, signals, signs, synchronicities. Okay. What do we have for the flame? Flame has Suelo, the rune of wholeness, and Gibo, the rune of partnership. Okay. Hmm. How interesting. Curiously enough, I feel that even though the orphan is a very good communicator, you really this person, you or the other, whoever it is, this person has really um is really able to hold a purity of heart, to see things, almost look at things through the eyes of a child. 
to communicate openly, honestly. But curiously enough, I'm not sure if the orphan is, hmm, I wanted to say quite as ready for this connection as the flame is, but really bizarrely, there's a very balanced sort of dance going on here, but it's keeping things up in the air. Because I think the orphan is actually needing the flame to reach out in a more open way and to communicate more openly. Actually, they need to hear how the flame feels and the flame feels very passionately about this, but they're not very good at expressing themselves. They're not confident. They know what they want with Suello. They know this is the pathway. They know, I think the flame absolutely knows that the orphan is, is like, like their person, the, the one. The orphan, I think, is watching for what kind of wanting some signs, some signals to give them the thumbs up to say, yes, you know, they're, they're on the lookout. The orphan is on the lookout for signs, for signals to see whether the flame is, is genuine, whether the flame is somebody who, who really, really is going to feel, feel for them with a passion and be able to demonstrate it. So things feel a little bit slightly stuck, a little bit, well, not exactly stuck, but up in the air in this connection. But I think this is why, actually. Let's draw more cards and see what we're shown. And we will be asking for the month ahead. Let's check in on the month ahead. So let's let's draw some messages that, that and see what the connection is here. Okay. These have just come straight out, so let's go with it. Okay. We've got to free yourself. You don't need to be in control of everything for a love relationship to be successful. Ooh, we've got an extra card. I didn't look at this. So we have free yourself. Let me move these cards over. Isn't it interesting? I feel so fascinating. I feel like I don't want to part them. Isn't that curious? I just feel I was about to move them aside and put these cards in the middle. I don't want to part them. There's a real strong magnetic pull here really really strong free yourself you don't need to be in control of everything for a love relationship to be successful twin flame this person is your mirror soul this is why this connection feels so sacred to you the flame <laughs> twin flame how lovely be optimistic keep in mind that you create your reality you can't attract love with a negative mindset true love this is the romance of a lifetime true and lasting love is here for you okay Right, so what we see here is the feelings are genuine on both sides, absolutely genuine on both sides, but there is a difficulty in communication. The orphan is better at communicating than the flame. The flame is hiding their, their light under a bushel because they don't quite w want to necessarily be seen in case, the, and the orphan I think gives off a, a, an exterior of being much colder, much, you know, much more in control here. But actually inside the orphan is, is a, a absolutely an open heart. There's a childlike innocence and a longing not to be alone, a longing to be connected. I think the love between these two people, the connection, if this is a destined relationship of of another sort, then I think that connection is real. What needs to happen here is some communication. Let's see how this month is gonna pan out. Could we see how the month is panning out for the orphan and the flame, please? Water. Soul retrieval. Ah. Pachamama. Ooh. Very powerful cards. Okay. And lastly, lightning. <laughs> right. This is electric. Okay. This is a 
connection of electricity. But you know what? It's also quite grounded. What you're needing to do is to earth and ground the passion between you through having an open conversation. At the moment, both of you are kind of hiding a little bit in different ways. I think something, it's feeling like stuff is up in the air. If this is an existing connection, I don't think you're necessarily both, neither, I don't think you're necessarily able to voice to each other really openly the depth and the passion of your real feelings. Because the, the emotions are so deep. And of course, soul retrieval, because this is, because this is a twin flame connection, because this is a past life connection, the connectivity between you is loaded. I mean, it's just loaded with, with literally history. Your souls know one another. And I think there's almost this sort of terror of getting, of moving it forwards, of really revealing yourselves because of the pure honesty that is genuinely there between you. So whether this is a platonic relationship or, you know, whatever the scenario, this is a coming together with purpose. So what I'm seeing is, you know, and with the lightning bolt, that it's kind of, I feel like you're being shown for the month ahead, well, kind of what do you want to do with this, really? Whether you are the flame or the orphan, what do you want to do? Because the, the guidance is very clear. It's about... Um, communicating let's ask could greater information be given about guidance okay so we have eight of wands i love this card i always feel the eight of wands in this in this pack it always just makes me think of a can of worms i think you're terrified that you're opening a can of worms <laughs> however page of pentacles you know, just get cool about this. Seriously, look, I feel like this is someone walking forward with, um, you know, okay, there's a lot of coolness, a lot of, but, but with confidence and genuineness in recognition of the promise, holding out like an olive branch. Yeah, maybe we have more guidance for the coming month. We have the King of Swords. I think some really clear conversation needs to take place. And... The reading is saying, look, don't be afraid to have that conversation. Don't be afraid to reveal yourselves. You know, it's not a can of worms. Just take it steady. Four of swords. You know, think about, don't rush into it. Don't charge at it like a bull in a china shop. But think about what you want to say and how you could say it. This would be one of those scenarios when you plan a conversation rather than just rushing into it. You plan a conversation. I mean, let's, let's actually check in and ask about what maybe, what the flame would like to say to the orphan and then we'll check in and ask what the orphan would like to say to the flame. What, what communication needs to take place to enable either the orphan or the flame, whoever's connecting in with this reading, to feel confident about moving this forwards, to feel earthed, grounded enough to take an action. Because the chemistry is dynamite. The emotional connection is, is so deep. May we please ask, what needs to be said? Okay, this is interesting from the flame. I need some more time before I can come to you. What's that about? I need to sort things out first before I can come to you. Okay, so the flame is actually needing to address something first. We'll get some clarifying cards on that. I dream about a future with you. Okay, so that's really interesting that that strength, that passion is there. But actually, the flame is, is, is actually does have to address some things first. What about the orphan? What would the orphan say to the flame? I don't want to wait any longer. Please be mine. I miss you. So the orphan just wants to, the orphan doesn't actually, of course, want to be abandoned. The orphan just wants this to happen. And the flame's saying, well, look, I've, I've got stuff I have to do before I can move ahead with this. I'm not quite ready. I don't know why. Um, let's let me get a different pack out. Bear with me while I move my packs around. Why is this? What's going on with the flame? King of Swords. Okay. 
I mean, th this person may just be very genuinely focused on some aspect of if this is you, there's something and you're sort of holding back a little bit. The other person is feeling like they just really, really want you. Well, I think they do. Um, I think the flame is perhaps very focused, very there are challenges that the that the the flame is is working on very they need to be focused on something in order to achieve it to do their best it would be like if they've had exams or were taking i don't know yeah taking final exams or working on a massive project and they simply cannot put it down they need to achieve achieve that first and they're trying to be very singular and very focused yeah nine of wands king of swords nine of wands they they really are trying to be very focused at achieving something there's something in their world that is a challenge for them that or or it's uh they're rising to the challenge or it's something that they need to do and they they're kind of very conscious of it they may have a commitment elsewhere actually i'm not necessarily seeing a love commitment you know but maybe that is a possibility here I need some time before I can come to you. I need to sort things out. But there's, there, I feel there's a commitment to something that needs to be addressed first before they can kind of come to you. Yeah, we have the moon. There's a process they actually have to go through. If this person is coming out of a, an existing relationship, maybe there's still a divorce going on. Yeah, nine of swords, a situation that hasn't been okay for them and they haven't wound their way out of it yet. They're still processing something and they don't want to, I don't think that they want to involve you if you are the orphan. Yeah, eight of cups. I think they feel that they have to be ready to, that they've got to be able to fully clear themselves of this scenario, whatever it is, before they can really come forwards. But they really, really want to. They absolutely want to, Princess of Pentacles. I mean, they see the future with you. They, there's a real recognition here, but they have to attend to something first. This is what they're saying. No wonder the um, Ark of the Covenant was in reverse here. Okay, let's, let's draw some additional messages here. So what does the orphan want to say to the flame? You are my secret passion. <laughs> wow. I love you. I hate you. So this is this sort of, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. And yet it's like we share the same heart and mind. I know who you are to me. I saw myself in you the first second I laid eyes on you. Yeah. Um, if you're the orphan, I think you really are fully aware of that soul connection. How about the flame? What is the flame saying to the orphan? How do I get you alone? It's heartbreaking we can't have more than we do now. You are my rose. I could listen to your voice for days on end. They just have to I mean, they long to get you alone. They long if, if you are the orphan that the flame longs to get the orphan alone. But their circumstances are not. Something has to get sorted, I believe, first. That's what we're being shown here. Okay. Let's, let's draw from the Hermit Tarot. How might this move on between these two? Strength, ego. You hurt me, but that's okay, I guess. I think this weight is hurting you both. You are wrong. No. Okay. I think both of you, uh, there is both parties here, are in this sort of dilemma because something can't move forwards quite yet. Or it seems as though the flame has stuff they have to deal with. Could well be partnership stuff. They're trying to go out on their own. They're trying to wrap stuff up and they don't want to involve the orphan in this. But I think the whole separation and things not being said mean that both parties feel constantly as if they are um, hurt up in the air. They don't know what's going on. You know, the flame doesn't know if the orphan will, orphan will wait. The orphan doesn't really know if the flame will ever be genuinely available. Um, you know, and so, so there's always this, this kind of dilemma of, of just not knowing where you both stand. 
But I think a lot of assumptions that, that actually in reality are, are probably wrong because it's very easy if we're in a space where someone isn't responsive and yet they seem, you know, it's like everything is there but it's not happening. I think that that can create a scenario where, you know, we, we then in our own mind build up all, a kind of a picture. But it's interesting here. Do you feel something could be said? And if something was said, it may actually mean that you know, the kind of, the waiting would cease, you know, the waiting would cease to be a problem, perhaps, if there's a general understanding. What could actually be said, you know? Okay, I am taking my time, we have all the time in the world. I live for your smile and would die for your kiss. I have tried telling you the truth so many times, but I just cannot for some reason. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think actually the conversation that needs to happen is possibly one that is just allowed to unfold a little more gently so that feelings can be voiced in a in a quite a non-threatening kind of way for both parties. I do feel with the rune of Anzus that the, the timing, that it will kind of emerge in its own time. Let's ask about this month. Um, you know, how is this month panning out? Four of Swords. So it's not, it needs to move forwards gently. Truce. It needs to move forwards really, really, really gently, really steadily. The Wheel of Fortune. Mm. I think, you know, the less pressure there is, the more likely this is going to, um, is going to emerge. The Magician. We have Ten of Swords. King of Cups, yeah. That's what I thought when I saw the Ten of Swords. I think this actual scenario that sits around the flame will come to an end and then it will be possible to move forwards. But in the meantime, it's kind of about sort of just keeping it chilled, keeping it real, not, not fueling the um, underlying emotions, not fueling stuff that feels like it's not, you know, the insecurities, that the, the stories we tell ourselves here. I think that's really what's needed. Let it unfold naturally. Um, I think the scenario or whatever is going on around the flame will, will actually reach a conclusion at some point during the next month. And when it does, I think things can move forwards. It's as if the flame is then free to move forwards at the moment. The light is kept under a bushel somehow for some reason. Could be that they are exiting something or they just have other commitments where they feel that they have to see them through first. Hmm. But I think, you know, the strength of the connection is real so you are going to need to adapt the energy of this reading if this is for somebody um, and it's a different kind of, it's a plutonic relationship. But I think the key here is to just recognize that, you know, the, the connection is absolutely there. It's just that one of these people has to be focused on processing something first before they can actually move forwards or just to be, maybe they're just ridiculously busy at work. They have to do that. Something has to happen first. So, pile two, I feel this is your reading. I think, I think things can move ahead this month, but the key to navigating the month is to honor your feelings, which are whether you are the flame or the orphan. If you're the flame, to keep processing whatever you need to process. Playing it cool, just letting it unfold, little by little. If you're the orphan, allowing it to unfold without feeling as though something is going horribly wrong if, you're, if it's not moving at the, the pace at which you feel it should. And then I think it will then naturally actually emerge and evolve. I really see, seeing that here within this, within this next month, or that certainly is what it looks like. Pile two, I am sending you so, so, so much love.
Um, thank you. I think this is your reading. I don't think there is any more to come through for you today. If you've enjoyed this and you would like me to continue doing these readings, I mean, I do do other re readings around relationships, you know, what is the person want to say to you and that kind of thing and what, what's on their mind and all kind, you know, what's the future of this relationship. There's quite a few of those, um, you know, on the site. Uh, but if you are wanting or enjoying this kind of relationship where we relationship reading and it could be a platonic person or a working alliance too it doesn't have to be love although i know for many it is and you want to look ahead for the month let me know put it in the comments and i will perhaps then continue with these um, and thank you for requesting it in the first place so beautiful souls um I am um, going to wrap up your reading. I have a, a quick message. I voiced this at the end of pile one as well. So if any of you have uh, been using, I mean, there are so many good readers out on YouTube, but if any of you are connected with White Rose Guidance, um, I think her name is Lindsay. Um, I know her as White Rose Guidance. Um, I just wanted to say, because um, I'm very conscious, uh, for me, I feel she really is the go-to relationship reader. She's absolutely amazing. She's taking quite a big break. Um, please send her love and light. If any of you have used her channel or connected in with her reading, she is an amazing reader. And, uh, you know, actually her, her readings are timeless. So there is nothing to stop people from continuing to check in with her readings even if she's not uploading anything new you can always tune in and find the right reading for you and just send her love and light because you know whenever a, a really good reader takes time out they're doing so with good reason it's her personal reasons it's not for us to be engaging in that whatsoever but we can send love and light um, her cards are available through her website I believe as well they are amazing these little message cards so do um, hold that light for her and do check out her channel even if she's not uploading new videos videos um, she really is an amazing relationship reader so pile two tons and tons of love and thank you so much for being here thank you for liking sharing subscribing and all the billions of gratitudes that I have for you it's such an honor to read for you and keep me posted if the reading is working for you resonating with you um, I do post, if you're new to the channel, I do actually post a reading every single Sunday for immediate guidance and we look at the next seven days. So really, you know, right here, right now guidance to assist you in navigating your world. And then I post a couple of others at least every week and some shorts asking specific questions. Sometimes they're astrology orientated, but you know, do keep a lookout for those. It's usually on a Tuesday and a Friday that I post. So um, beautiful souls, um, I'm just sending you tons of love. Thank you. And thank you all of you who are also now part of the membership part of the channel. So you're checking in with the extended readings. If you're on Patreon, checking in with the extended readings. And also for those of you who give back through the super thanks. All of your extra donations are really, really gratefully received. Thank you. And thank you just for being here. Tons of love, pile two. Pile three, welcome to your reading. You have the beautiful purple heart, fifth house creativity. I heard very clearly actually that this is the energy sitting around you and someone else and uh, you know, we're going to look at how what's happening in the month ahead. I, I heard very clearly take off the masks that you believed you need to wear. This is uh, you're being asked to be your authentic self, whichever party you are. I'm going to draw two cards to get the sort of vibe and the feel of, of the two people involved. We have Alethea is one person and then we have the energy of the second person. I'm actually seeing this one. We have Thanatos. Wow. Okay. This is, um, <clears throat> this is a very powerful dynamic. Thanatos is kind of about death and rebirth and diving into the underworld. So this person is very deep, very, very deep. Okay. The other person, I think, is a bit more fixed, actually, sees things in very black and white terms. Yeah, very interesting. I think, I think both people here see the world through a very different lens. Okay, so I'm actually going to draw some more cards around both of these people to give you a little bit more information and a flavour. 
I sort of, there's a really interesting energy between you. That's what's really coming across. This is a real kind of chalk and cheese, seeing things through a different lens. Alethea, seeing it being very black and white, but it's, it's also about speaking the truth. And this is kind of delving deep into the underworld, death, rebirth, transformation. Yes, let's get some more cards around both of you. Could we have a, a feel of, in fact, actually, I'm going to use this pack here. Could we have a little bit more information about both of these people. Could we have more information about Alethea, please? Okay, Beauty Way. Okay. And could we have a, another card for Thanatos, please? Thunder. Okay, right. <laughs> right, this is really interesting. This reading is fascinating already by all three. It really, really is. Okay. So I think this is somebody who you don't sit so easily with. Okay. Um, you see things from a very, very different perspective. And now... I did hear, you know, take off the masks you believe you need to wear. And so I, I think, I, I sort of want to say the truth will out really here. I, th I think this person, Alethe Alethea, I think, has a lot more clarity with the beauty way. I think this person has, whoever is Alethea in this dynamic duo, Alethea has a lot more clarity, has done a lot of transformational work. I think the perspective, the lens that Alethea looks at the, work, the world through is much more one of peace, of harmony, of walking the good red road, telling the truth, wanting to hold, uphold justice, do the right thing. I think Thanatos is in a, much, is in a bit of a lower vibrational state. Okay, I think this is a more complex person who possibly tangles themselves up in their own stuff, in their own head. Um, maybe somebody who, yeah, really quite deep, dark moods. There could be some mental health issues even around this person. Somebody who has actually internally kind of struggled. That There's a very, very different energy here. I'm not saying that Alethea hasn't struggled, but I feel Alethea has struggled and transformed, whereas Thanatos struggles and hasn't yet transformed. So we're seeing a very different, very different, literally a different age and stage, almost of like soul development. It's not just age and stage of your journey, and that's, that's the age and stage of what I would call um, it, emotional maturity, soul development, soul evolution. Alethea is, has probably had many more lives or is more evolved than Thanatos. That's what I'm seeing. We're all where we are on our pathway. Okay, look at all these buffaloes here. Can you see those just underneath here? But they're all swimming in water. Or they look like they're swimming in water, wading through stuff. I think this person wants balance. Thanatos would like balance, but I don't think they're very good at achieving it, actually. Let's draw some uh, Akashic tarot cards and see what we're shown. What is happening between these two people? So we have Hilarion. This is a card of learning. We have the War of the Roses, we have the Journey, we have the Treasure, okay, okay, um, obviously this is a general reading so I don't know who this person is to you, I don't know whether you are Alethea or Thanatos, my beautiful souls, pile three, but this is not an easy connection. You know, there is a very different perspective. Lots, there's quite a bit of conflict here. That's what I'm seeing. It can feel as if somehow it's quite hard. Things are not seen when, you know, Hilarion is a card of learning. You may have known one another in a past life before. But if it was, you, you probably had conflict then <laughs> as well. Maybe you've come back this time round to try and resolve the conflict. 
one of you may well actually have come back round to try and fix this or to, or to get something from this connection. There is learning to be had here. But yes, it's like shadows of the past. Seeing a mother and a, a daughter here, it looks like a mother and a child. Yeah, this could be for some of you, um, although many of you will be looking at this for a, a love connection. Um, this could also be, a, I sort of see like a family connection. Maybe in a past life you were family members. Or perhaps this is about a family member now, if you're looking at this for a different connection, a different relationship. Um, if the energy of Thanatos and Alethea isn't sitting with you, it might not be the right reading for you, because this is definitely a reading where there is a creative solution is needing to be found here. There's a, there is definitely very different perspectives held here. It almost feels like every time a, a, a step is made towards progress, it all goes horribly wrong. It, it, you know, it's a, some, something never quite seems to move forwards. Or well, there's always a bit of chaos around here. I'm seeing lots of chaos here in this card. And yet, there is a treasure chest here at the back. Something to be salvaged. Mm. This is not an easy connection, that's what I have to say. Let's check out and see what is being shown here. Can we get... Um, some some messages around let's ask for messages from Alethea first of all open yourself to others this is how you will create new friendships and attract a love relationship we have redirect your thoughts focus on what you want to attract not on what you fear will happen leave your fears behind they are stopping this relationship from blossoming okay I sort of feel for Alethea. Maybe there are fears around difficulty in navigating conflict here or concerns. It's very interesting. I wonder if Alethea is actually voicing this to Thanatos, asking Thanatos to be more open, more available to focus on, because Thanatos seems to me to be much more tangled up here. Focus on what you want rather than what you want to happen and recognising that with Thanatos, you know, there are fears that are getting in the way. Because I feel Alethea sees possibility. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not saying Thanatos doesn't see possibility. I think Thanatos does see possibility, but I do think Thanatos isn't, is still quite tangled in something, perhaps some past connection here or a past conflict or a past relationship, it's still in the way. They haven't processed some form of transformation yet. So they're not really fully available. So Alethea in a very clear way is saying, well, you could open yourself up, you know, redirect your thoughts, focus on what you do want rather than what you don't want. So I think Alethea is seeing, um, not just possibility, but the way to achieve that possibility. What about Thanatos? What would Thanatos be saying either to themselves or to Alethea? Be optimistic. Okay, so actually, keep in mind that you create your reality. You can't attract love with a negative mindset. I think Thanatos does listen to Alethea. I think Thanatos does recognise that Alethea is telling the truth. And put yourself first. Loving yourself makes you more romantically attractive. New love, a new chapter begins, whether it's with a new partner or in a current relationship. So what we have here is very, very interesting. I think on both sides here, there's a kind of a recognition. Fascinatingly, creativity there is common ground even though you see the world say see the world through a different lens I think you're very different people very very different people now that doesn't mean that this can't work if it's an intimate relationship but it, it's not on <coughs> it doesn't feel as if it's on solid ground at the moment what is interesting is you do I think Thanatos sees Alethea as someone who is fixed they're sorted now, of course, Alethea actually has been through quite a lot as well in order to be in the position they're in. 
I think so, you know, it's very important for Alethea <coughs> to take off the masks and sort of show vulnerability because it's all looking like it's very fixed and sorted. And in a way, I think Thanatos sees all the sortedness and thinks, well, you, you've got it sus, why would you be interested in me? I'm just a mess. I'm in a pickle over here. I've tangled myself up in stuff and I'm not really, I want to move forwards. I'm optimistic, but... You know, I, and I want a new chapter, but but why would you be interested in me? I think this person is lacking. I think they feel like they are a mess and that things haven't gone well for them in the past and that somehow there, there is a lot of fear around things going wrong. Okay, let's see what else we have here. May we have additional messages, please? So... What does Alethea want to voice? Oh, actually, I'm just going to go with these before I say Alethea. Alethea is very enthusiastic if these are your cards. Okay. I'm tired of running. I'm yours forever. I don't want to make, wait any longer. Please be mine. Okay. So Alethea just wants this to happen. Okay. Whereas Thanatos is holding back, I think. What's the point of it all? Yeah. You're mine forever and ever. Okay, so there is a possibility here. I dream about a future with you all. I think Thanatos literally swings from being in a space of possibility to feeling like this is never going to happen. I think they are up and down like a yo-yo. I think they range, they have a lot of inner battle in a turmoil over this connection they swing from thinking this is just amazing to thinking oh I can't do this I'm a disaster why would Alethea be interested and I think Alethea is probably getting slightly fed up with this sort of you know we think we're moving forwards then we're not we think we are then we're not sort of sitting in this yo-yo position again it's sort of swinging a bit like a pendulum but I do think there is a dynamic kind of connection between you um, and again I think perhaps a past life connection let's see what else we are shown here how do I get you alone thank you for your beautiful presence in my life okay so we're seeing genuinely a lot of gratitude a lot of appreciation I know that you know I'm hiding deep feelings for you and now I feel stuck there is a real energy between you I think both of you ironically enough even though Alethea is in, is in a much clearer space within themselves than Thanatos <clears throat> I do actually think that both of you do sort of have an inner clarity as to the potential of this connection let's ask yeah, rather than more messages let's just ask where is this connection going? How might it unfold? How might it flow? How is this happening? And how is it going to unfold in the next month as well? So we have the Eight of Swords. Okay, so it's feeling a little bit sort of... Um, there's, there's anxiety around whether it's going to work. There's a lot of worry. Will it happen? Will it not happen? I think, interestingly enough, possibly even on both sides, because it's this is a, a massive mix of both clarity and confusion, for want of a better way of saying it. I think in an interesting way, because there's a very strong, there is a very, very strong connection that's sort of um, almost like a mirroring of something, but the mirroring is largely unconscious. Outwardly, you look like very different people. Outwardly, you look as if you present a very different lens to the world that kind of chalk and cheese one of you might be very emotional very spiritual the other much more kind of you know mental and, and and in your head but I feel that the connection is very very strong and at a core level both parties really would really really actually on the one hand they would really like this to move forwards they see possibility both parties on the other hand I think neither are really able to kind of talk openly about how they're feeling and somehow there is this sort of chemistry and then maybe distance apart as well. 
and then you come together and there's chemistry and then but nothing quite happens there is like a swinging like a yo-yo that I'm seeing here and so it leaves in a way both of you feeling worried yeah we've got eight of swords and eight of wands so it feels like the whole thing I always think this reminds me of a can of worms I think you know there there is it does feel like this is a bit of a can of worms because it's not kind of it hasn't really been going anywhere it's it's been feeling stuck despite the fact that there are very deep feelings involved. Okay. So nine of pentacles. Okay. There is this possibility. That I think there's something that could manifest here that's very real with nine of pentacles. Let's ask how this month is panning out. How is this panning out over the next month? Okay, we have temperance. Okay, we have the moon. Whoa, okay. What do we have here? We have the moon, we have the eight of pentacles, we have the queen of wands, the emperor and the two of cups. Okay. <laughs> I think actually with the emperor and the and the Queen of Wands. I, I am seeing these, again, these two sides to this. I'm seeing frustration on the one hand, that it doesn't move forwards. On the other hand, I am seeing um, the potential for something to be worked at here and a really fruitful outcome. Curiously enough, I suspect that this is a month Especially with the moon, I'm seeing like a, a cycle. Yeah. I'm so, so okay, let me let's read into your story here. And get another tarot pack as well for clarification. Because I'm sort of seeing almost as if I feel almost as if you're going to part and then come back together. That's what I'm seeing. It's almost as though. Um, I feel a little bit like Alethea, actually. You might just get a little bit fed up waiting if you are Alethea or whoever is Alethea in this connection might get a little fed up that something isn't working and sort of begin to move away. And then I think because Alethea is moving away, Thanatos picks up on that and thinks and, and then decides I really need to take an action here. So I feel like there may be a parting and then a coming back together somehow the coming back together looks very favorable actually with the two of cups almost that recognition that i mean maybe thanatos actually does work through something here eight of pentacles actually does there's a, there's a realization and a recognition i think of you know actually i could lose this if i don't get it together that's what i think thanatos gets to how does this progress further? May we see. We have Ten of Pentacles. Look at these two people coming back together. We have Ten of Wands. And then we have Justice. Mm. This is showing the same thing. We've got all this potential. Then it feeling as though somehow it's it all feels a bit full of anxiety, it's not working, and then suddenly there will there's like a the justice card, it's like a, a wake-up call kind of almost. Let's see what the outcome is. Can we get an affirmation about the outcome of the justice card? That sort of wake up. Yeah, it is a wake-up call. I think that's what we're being shown here. Okay, the outcome, peace. Interesting, isn't it? It's a two of swords, but it's a peace card. I think a decision will be made this month, actually. I think that's what we're being shown. A decision will be made. Prince of Wands, and actually I think that decision will be to move something forward. So something that feels like, almost like at the moment, your worlds apart. And the worlds apart might not just be who you are as people, but the worlds apart, the way you see it, is, is about how you proceed. And I actually feel there will be a coming together 
that's what this looks like this month, a coming together and a decision to be made. Like things come to a head. I suspect part of the coming to a head, it, it's on both sides. Creative solutions can be found. I think it is on both for both parties, but I think it sort of emerges whereby there's a drifting apart and then there's a sort of a, a realisation, that kind of wake up call that, and I think particularly for Thanatos, that, that sort of, you know, I, I think Alethea is almost in that zone of, well, do you know what, if this isn't going to happen, I need to get my act together, very clear, move on, face the truth. And then Thanatos sort of actually sort of wakes up a bit and thinks, well, hang on a minute, you know, I don't really, really actually don't want to lose this person, so I'm going to actually move this forwards. Now, obviously, this is, uh, I'm viewing this from an intimate relationship perspective. If you're looking at this from a, a different angle, if you're coming at this, if, if it's a friendship or a, another relationship, I think the same principle applies that you're seeing things in a different through different lens, a different way of seeing it. Um, and there has been a bit of a moving apart, coming back together. Will this work? Thinking it's thinking that there's potential, but one person thinking being more reticent or feeling like they've got too much stuff going on or other things happening. I, th I think we've got the same kind of energy here applying to any relationship, any connection with with Alethea deciding that, do you know what, I really just need to, to move on. And then Thanatos sort of actually coming, waking up and saying, do you know what, actually, I need to get my act together and, and make this happen. It's a bit like if you're applying for a job, if this was a professional relationship, Alethea is, do you know what, I'm just going to look elsewhere. The contract hasn't arrived. And Thanatos is sort of like, whoa, even though my life is loaded with stuff, I, I don't want to lose this person. I need to get that contract out there and do it now. So, so there's something here that shifts I think in the month that's what we're being shown here um, but there has been a lot of sort of different ways of looking at things I think that have caused caused this to not necessarily run smoothly that's what I'm seeing here I think we are nearly there but let us draw just a few more cards to look at perhaps the outcome of this where this might then go Okay, I'm afraid to talk. I hope you'll wait for me. Yeah, the energy around you is ever so strong in terms of this sort of difficulty. Difficulty in communication. You hurt me, but that's that's okay, I guess. So yeah, there's, there's definitely been um, a discord, a problem, something hasn't moved forwards. It does look as though this can actually move forwards. It may even be that you just agree to be friends. That there's not, you know, that you just agree how you're going to move forwards. You work out how you're going to do this for some of you. In fact, of course, it could be a friendship for some of you. But I, I do think this is genuinely, um, genuinely possible. We've got you. Look at this. You you couldn't write it, is it? You are wrong. You are right. I mean, this is just showing the fact that you're actually, you're really, really different people. You're wrong. You're right. You're just very, very different people. You see the process of what's happened through a very, very, very different lens, a very pers different perspective. It looks to me as though, right back to your first card, a creative solution can be found. What's really important, whether you are Thanatos or whether you are Alethea, that you take off the masks and you're upfront about your feelings. Um, because that's the starting point where if people come from different perspectives, I mean, you know, that can be an amazing place of discovery, of um, of evolution, of growth. Um, the treasure is all about this, actually. You know, this card is saying, you know, despite sort of some chaos, the, the actual core essence, the, the, the treasure is still present. It's as though this house has been ransacked, but the most important and valuable thing is still there. It's in this little treasure chest on the table. Whoever ransacked the house missed it. So the treasure is still there. Something can be discovered, refound, rebuilt. So there is a lot of possibility in this reading my beautiful souls. Um, 
you know, I think that's probably all that I am going to do today. But you are a bit chalk and cheese, but I do think I do think there could be real treasure to be found here. It's a dynamic connection, that's for sure. And I think the reason it's so dynamic is because it probably does go back to a past life connection, actually. You know, there's been a real, yeah, a real um, a journey. There's a journey to go on together here, actually. So beautiful souls, um, this is your reading today. Very, very interesting. Keep me posted in the comments. Let me know as well if this sort of, this reading is, is working for you, these readings. As I said, it was a request for a relationship reading. So um, a monthly relationship reading, looking at, at that and how it's going to pan out. I do think there'll be sort of a, a swing, that swinging will continue a little bit, but I I do think there will be almost like a parting and then a, oh, actually this is, this is really dynamic. Let's come back together. So very, very interesting to see how this pans out. Out. beautiful souls there is the potential here that's for sure um so tons of love um and you know keep me posted uh, do let us know in the comments if these readings are right for you and i will then do them every month beautiful souls tons and tons and tons of love to you um I look forward to seeing you again for some other readings. Every Sunday, I post a reading where we look immediately for a message that you need and weekly guidance, which I know many of you are finding helpful. Thank you so much for your feedback and your comments. Um, and I do post other readings on Tuesdays and Fridays usually, uh, and then shorts in between. So do check those out. Um, those other readings are often in alignment with planetary stuff, with energy shifts, with all kinds of things that are going on, on in the time that we are living in, which is an extraordinary time of transition um, so um, yeah do keep a look out for those thank you for liking sharing subscribing and if you don't get the readings coming through into your stream as many people don't seem to be getting them even though they're subscribed if you just check out the moon magic um, homepage, you should be able to see the videos as soon as I upload them beautiful souls tons and tons of love